In this video, I'm just going to go over how to set up a basic development environment for working with C on a Mac. So to set up a development environment, we're going to need at least two things. We're going to need a text editor to allow us to write the C code and save it to files. And we're going to need a compiler that's going to take that C code and turn it into an executable program that we can run. So the first thing I'm going to get is a text editor. And the one I recommend is Visual Studio Code. Just go into Google, just type in Visual Studio Code, it'll come up. You can click the first download link and you can download it for Mac. I'll just say open with, okay. And Visual Studio Code is great. It's made by Microsoft. It's become my favorite text editor lately, but there are other good ones, just so you know. So if for some reason you don't like Visual Studio Code, another one I'd recommend is called Atom. So Atom is another great text editor. Another good one I recommend is called Sublime Text. So you just go to Google, type in Sublime Text, and you can find it here. It's another great editor. You can't really go wrong. I just really like Visual Studio Code lately, so that's one I'm recommending first. So it'll take a second to download, and once it does, you can just open up the zip file and drag the application into the Applications folder. So there it goes, it's expanding now. Okay, we'll just drag it into Applications, and that's really it for installing it. And then just double click on Visual Studio Code, and it will come up. I'll say Open here. So your welcome screen might look different. I mean, it's going to change over the years, but this is what mine looks like. I've also had it installed before. So it's also kind of using some of my previous folders in that, but for you, it might look a bit different, but it's the same idea. So to make a new file, you can just say file, new file, or you can hit command N. It's a good idea to get to know these shortcuts as you start working with a text editor, but I'm going to hit command N. That's going to open up a new file here where I can actually create new content and save it. And I'm going to make a basic C Hello World program here, like a very basic C Hello World program. So I'm going to say number sign include stdio.h. Then I'll say int main void. And I'm going to say printf hello world slash or backslash n double quote semicolon return zero. And I'm going to save this now as hello.c. And I'll save it to a folder that I make on the desktop. So I'm going to go to desktop here. I'm going to say new folder and I'll say video. Then I'll say hello.c. So notice when I save it as hello.c, it actually went out and syntax highlighted things for me. Now this is a key property of text editors that they, they give you this syntax highlighting where things like keywords like int and return, those are important words in C, they're highlighted for us. And that makes the code way easier to understand. It also does a bunch of nice things for us. Like if I type in printf and I say double quote here, it actually just gives me that second quote there because it knows like, well, you're, you're putting a quote inside this printf. So we better give you the other, the other double quote that you need there because we know you're going to need it. And it just does it for you automatically. So a good modern text editor like this is pretty essential to saving time and doing, you know, serious programming. So I'll just save this again. And now one thing that was interesting is the program came up with this install command line tools uh, option here, this dialog here, I'm going to say cancel, and I'm going to show you how to install the Xcode command line tools the way that I know how to do it. But this might actually work for you, but we'll just do it the way that I know how to do it first. So this was the text editor. The next thing we need to do is install the compiler to actually compile the program. Now, the one that I recommend is the Xcode command line tools, because that comes with the GCC compiler. And the GCC compiler is basically the de facto standard C compiler to use. And so we might as well use this one. So to install this, you want to use the terminal. So you can go up here to the spotlight and you can type in terminal and it'll come up that way. Or you could go down here to launchpad and you could type in terminal here and it'll come up with the terminal. Either way you do it, just click on the terminal. It'll come up with something that looks like this. I'm going to say clear. But what this says here is the default interactive shell. So the terminal, if you've never used one before, this is a command line interface where you type in text commands to do things like run programs or change folders or create folders or create files and do all kinds of work on your computer. Now, it's very popular with developers because you can do things like scripting. So you could actually have a series of commands run, like run this program, then run another program, then run another program. And that kind of ability to automate things makes it a very good tool for developers who are, you know, power users that want to use advanced features and, and do advanced things, right? So 
terminals like this and shells like this, we should call them, they're very popular for developers. So I'm going to say clear here first. That just sort of clears away all that sort of preamble I got there. And there's a bunch of commands that you can learn over the, over the years as you learn how to use a terminal. One is ls. ls will show you all the files in the current directory and, and the folders in the current directory as well. And ls is a command you could use just to see what you've got in your current folder. Now, there is this idea of being in a current folder. So when you're on a shell and you're typing in commands, you're typing them from a current folder. So if you can do something like create a folder, it's gonna create that, that folder in the current folder that you're in. So to know the current folder that you're in, you can type in PWD. And this tells me that I'm in the user's Kevin Brown folder. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the desktop folder and I'm gonna go to the video folder. So I'm gonna say CD desktop, then I'm gonna say CD video. And what this did is it changed folders for me. It moved me from this folder to this folder to this folder. And it just allows me to change directories, change directories to the directories that I'm in. Whether you call them directories or folders doesn't really matter. I kind of use them interchangeably. So if I do an ls here, we see that we've got the hello.c file. Now what I want to do is I want to compile that file. I want to take that file, I want to turn it into an executable. And that's where the Xcode command line tools come in handy because they come with a GCC compiler that allows me to do that. So I'm going to say here, Xcode select dash dash install. And what this will do is it will install the Xcode command line tools for me. So that's the command right there. Xcode dash select space dash dash install. So you hit enter and say install and then say agree. And this might actually take a while to install. Initially for me, it comes up with this very scary time for how long it's going to take to install. It doesn't take quite that long though in practice, at least I found. I found that it sort of actually gets down to like maybe 15, 20 minutes for me at least. Uh, I'm, I'm on five though, so maybe I'm, maybe I'm lucky. But I'm just going to give this a little bit to install and then we'll kind of catch up when it's finished. All right, so eventually it'll finish installing. So we get the software was installed and you click done. And then to actually run the compiler, you just say GCC. Now we actually have to provide it with some arguments here, otherwise it's not going to work. And what we need to tell it is, here's the file I want you to compile. And what we should tell it too is, here's the name of the executable file that I want you to produce. So right now we've got a file here, hello.c, right? And that is our C program that we wrote. It's this one here, the hello world program here. And what I'm going to say is gcc dash, and I'll make it a little bigger here, I'm going to say gcc dash o hello hello.c and what this is telling gcc is i want you to produce an output file called hello that's what the dash o hello is and then hello.c is the name of the file that i want to actually compile so run this it compiles the file and if we do an ls i now see that i have this hello file here and the hello file is the executable that i could run so i could say dot slash hello and that runs my file there i get hello world now, if I did want to, say, do something a bit more complicated with my program, eventually I'm probably going to run into some kind of compilation error where there's something wrong with my program. So maybe I forget a squiggly bracket. And because I forget a squiggly bracket, my C program is incorrectly formatted. It is not a proper C program. And the compiler is going to give me an error about that. The compiler is going to say, hey, there's something wrong here. So I'm going to save this file here. I'm going to go over to my terminal again, and now I'm going to try to compile it. So I'm going to say GCC dash o hello hello.c. I just hit up a bunch of times there just to actually get back to the previous command that I ran. So if you ever want to run a command that you run previously, just so you know, you can just hit up. So I just say up, up, up. It brings back this command again. So I'm just gonna run this command again to try to compile it. But this time when I try to compile it, I get an error. It says error expected close squiggly bracket. And it's telling me that you got something wrong here. So as you do go, as you do go to compile your programs, you're gonna run into errors like this. Just try to use the error text here to help you figure out what the error is. It'll try to point you towards the line number where things went wrong. So like here it's saying like at line six, we're noticing something like line six there. So that's where you'd want to start searching for the error is at that point. And, you know, it's telling you here expected close squiggly bracket. So this one's actually pretty helpful. Sometimes the error messages are not helpful at all. Sometimes they're very confusing. Maybe because we just don't understand the error message or maybe because the error message itself is just sort of like arcane and sort of, you know, beyond a sort of typical understanding of C programming. And if that's the case, one of the best things you can do is just take the error message, just like literally take it, especially the part that doesn't include your file name and the line number, but take the error description like this and copy and paste that and go to Firefox. You can go to Google 
and type in that error. And chances are the first website that's going to come up is what's called Stack Overflow. Now there could be other websites, but Stack Overflow is probably going to be the most typical website that comes up. And you might even want to just search for it on Stack Overflow because Stack Overflow has basically a form like this where people that have problems with their program, they get help. So they basically ask a question and then people ask them, people give answers. They say, well, this is what you got to do to fix it, right? So if you ever get an error you can't understand, that's my recommendation is honestly go to Google, type it in, uh, try to go to Stack Overflow first and see if people are helping helping the person with the answer there, with the answer to that question there. And then try to use their answer to you know guide yourself to your own solution to that, to that problem. The only reason why I say go to Google and not Stack Overflow is that there are random other websites that also have good feedback as well, like and other forms, other things like Reddit and that that might come up as well. So, so use Google, but it's probably just going to pass you over to Stack Overflow and that's fine. But this is really enough to get you going is you can just save your .c files with Visual Studio Code and then you can compile them with the GCC compiler in the terminal with a, with a command like this. And, and that's really it. Now, if you start getting into really complicated C programs that are spread across multiple files, compilation does become more involved. And the next topic to look up there is something called make files. But for just getting going with C compilation, this is actually enough. So hopefully this video has been helpful for helping you set up a development environment for working with C on a Mac. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.